Welcome back, I'm Benjamin. Today we're going to be processing IC410, the Tadpole Nebula. We're going to do a, a tight cropping on the tadpoles. So let's start with our, our picture. Do an auto stretch. And the tadpoles are right in here in this nebula. So we're cropping out a lot of data today. But we've drizzled um, times two, so we've got a little bit of more depth than the 11 megapixel camera that I was shooting with the 294 MC Pro. So let's get started. Script, image analysis, image solver. All right, now we're going to run spectrophotometric color calibration with the L Extreme selected, because that's the filter I use, and I'll opt along L Extreme. So this is 18 600 second exposures through the LX stream. So two, three hours total exposure time. The telescope is a 75Q Apertura, Apertura 75Q, 405 millimeter ap focal length. Camera is an a ASI 294 MC Pro. All right. So this is what we're dealing with. There are the tadpoles. Let's go ahead and crop in and make all of our processing faster because we know we're going to crop in. So let's just take this area right here. Something along those lines. All right, let's run the Blur Exterminator. And this is, of course, the new Blur Exterminator, version 2.00 AI version, oops, downgraded my version, version 4. I'm not sure what happened. I'm gonna... So let's apply that. All right. Noise exterminator. Let's see how bad the noise is. The noise is present, but it's a three-hour exposure, so the noise is, is still not really greatly controlled, but the noise exterminator should deal with that nicely. Noise exterminator. Do it at 85.85 on the denoise. Take a look at that. Yeah, that, that completely removes the noise. That's very nice. All right, let's begin stretching. Generalized hyperbolic stretch. Turn off the, the auto transfer function stretch. Let's zoom in on, onto our data. There it is. My opening numbers are local intensity between 10 and 12, normally around 11. Stretch factor up and uh, raise the stretch factor until you just see the nebula poking through. Don't want to go too far. So in this case, it's 4.22. And the symmetry point is 0 0.005280, which your numbers will vary, of course. So let's apply that. Zoom back out. And then start stretching the histogram. And you see it comes out real nice with the generalized hyperbolic stretch. Let's accept that. There's a lump there, so let's try to smooth that out a little bit. Add some more contrast. Don't want those stars to get too blown out, so we'll bring down the protect highlights. All right, that looks nice. Now let's take the stars away. 
process all processes star exterminator. Now I'm thinking these stars are stretched properly. I don't think they need any more stretching. But I'll judge that when I put them back in. All right, as usual, we've got a, a big green blob here where the nebula was. So let's do SCNR to remove that. SCNR green. SCNR blue. SCNR green. That looks pretty good. Pretty neutral. Let's run script, utilities, correct magenta stars. All right, let's rename this to stars. And we'll put it away for the moment. I'm going to try to stretch this nebula just a little bit more. So let's go back into generalized hyperbolic stretch. Turn our preview back on. And let's just do just a little bit more stretching, very light stretching. Very light stretching. And let's get a, a symmetry point here in this in this highlight area. I'm going to use the protect shadows to keep everything from getting too dark. You see that it just adds more contrast in this in this light area in here because so this is the There we go. This is what I changed it to, and this is before. You can see right in here there's more detail. So let's accept that. And I think that's I think that's good for now. So let's go ahead and run the narrow band normalization. Bring up my preview window. HOO, lightness set to H alpha. I'm playing around a little bit with mode two in this case, because I want my nebula to be kind of red. I want my O3 data in the inside to be kind of blue. So I'm gonna stick with mode two this time. And I want there to be as much contrast between the two colors as possible. So boost the O2, try to get a little bit more blue in there so I can grab that with the mask. I had it through OK. Brightness, will raise the overall brightness a little bit and try to reduce the highlight so we can keep that contrast. We'll run a curves on it later to bring the contrast back up, but let's keep the contrast for now. Let's apply that. So let's run a blue mask. Let's blur the mask. apply the mask. Let's go into curve transformation. Play with our B factor component, sorry, component. And bring out those blues. And then fine tune the blue color. Let us Add a little bit more green, take out a little, no, leave the reds pretty much alone. Raise the C component a little bit. And let's accept that, nice blue color. That's way too much, that's good. 
I always like to apply things twice. Mask, remove mask. Delete the mask. All right, let's take a red mask and deal with the, everything else. Let's blur the mask once, blur the mask twice. Apply the mask, highlight the picture so it's active. Curve transformation. All right, that's A component. B component. C component. Red. Green. I want it to be a gold red color. And blue. Yeah. Right there, I like that two-tone color right there where it's got the blue to the almost white to the yellow, gold. That looks nice. Press it up, mask, remove mask, close the mask, delete the mask. You can really see those tadpoles. It looks really nice. Let's try to add a little bit more contrast to it by going to All Processes, Local Histogram and Transformation. Sorry, Local Histogram Equalization. And let's play with this till we get a result that we like. Gives it a real 3D effect. Don't want to go too far because for some reason that I'm not aware of, when I raise the contrast, it doesn't raise the contrast um, between the blue and the tadpoles. I'm sure it has something to do with contrast limit or kernel radius being too high. Let's see, if we lower the kernel radius, so it's, I believe that means that it's working on smaller objects. That actually looks better. That creates a little bit more definition. That looks nice. Yeah, there we go. Let's apply that. Okay. Uh, let's see what another round of Blur Exterminator does to it. I think it's going to be overkill, so let's drop the non sharpen uh, sharpen non stellar details. And apply that. That really brings it out. It doesn't bring out too much. Let's see, that's 100%. And it's a little grainy, but it's only three hours worth of data, so I need more data. So let's let's accept that, and let's run Noise Exterminator on it again. See if we can't blur out a little bit of that noise. Yes, we can. All right, let's put our stars back in at this point. See how they look with the with the stretch nebula. We got pixel math tilde parentheses parentheses starless times tilde stars. Close parentheses, we need to rename this layer to starless. 
All right, let's add our stars back in. And before we do that, let's undo that. Let's actually add a little more contrast because it's a little dim, a little flat. So curves transformation. Bring that up a lot. Raise the contrast quite a bit. That looks better. Now let's add our stars back in. And there you have it, Tadpole Nebula. Now do I like the crop or do I want to crop it in a little bit more? I think I want to crop it in a little bit more. So let's play with the crop just a touch more. Get a little more focus on those tadpoles. Not losing too much here. Let's see what that ratio works out to be. 2080 times 3 divided by 2, 3120. Don't like that. I don't like how it cuts off the top of the nebula. So I'm going to leave it like this because I like it like that. I don't think we need to crop it anymore. I don't like losing parts of the nebula, the main nebula right here at the top. So let's just accept this. Let's make it a little bigger for you guys to see. This is um, IC410, the Tadpole Nebula. There it is at 100%. Zoom out a little bit. And you got a nice view of the tadpoles. So thank you very much. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.